Hello, welcome to a new episode of 2020. Welcome, my name is John Gerges, and I am the host for this evening's session. And I'd like to introduce to you a very distinguished, and I'm honored to be with them, group of young adults. Hi, my name is Marina, and I'm from St. Mark's Church in Scarborough. My name is Ilaria, and from, from Saint, I'm from St. Bishoy Stovall. Hi, uh, I'm Mark, and I'm from Church of Archangel Michael and St. Tecla in Brampton, Ontario. Uh, I'm Mark as well, and I'm from St. Bishoy Stovall. Very good, excellent. We are here this evening to discuss a major topic talking about prison. No, actually, we're not talking about prison. We're talking about freedom. And what does it mean? What does freedom mean? Freedom, I, I think it's sort of absence of boundaries. It's, it's sort of that, at, like, lacking something. Not necessarily having something, but not having something. For example, those boundaries and stuff like okay. that. So, so lack of boundaries. Yeah. No freedom. limitations, no mm -hmm. rules. Exactly. Like lack of Just certain do, things. Do whatever. No do whatever. <laughs> um, I think freedom represents um, a state of peace because of the lack of boundaries. Um, when people are tied down by rules or, or chains, so to speak, mm. um, they become less and less peaceful, and they become more hostile. I think. I think freedom gives uh, freedom is the meaning of peace in some senses. Okay. Can you be free with boundaries? Mm. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Kind of caught me by surprise. Yeah, I think you can. <laughs> How? Um, for example, there are certain limitations that we as Christians must abide by, but at the same time, we live in a very free country, and we're not facing oppression from other people. I mean, we're still free to practice our own faith, but we have our own moral code, and we know our boundaries. So we are free, but we still have our own limitations, and everybody's free. But it just depends on their own moral code. Be them, be they Christian or not, mm -hmm. they have their own set of, you know, this is wrong, this mm -hmm. is right, the rules. Okay. So that's what I, I think. I think sometimes that doesn't even come by faith. It just comes by, not even experience, but like just natural, like, um, like, uh, sorry, not experience, but rather just natural senses, sort of, and just your natural thoughts, sort of, and just how you sort of analyze something and how you see, okay, how is this going to benefit me, how is this not going to benefit me. So I think we can be free within boundaries when the boundaries don't impose on things that we do naturally. Um, so like she said, we are, we're free to practice our faith. That's something that we want to do naturally. Like we, we naturally want to praise a God or we naturally want to um, love something that's bigger than us. So that, the, there's no boundary that imposes on that freedom. Um, when the boundaries don't impose on freedoms that are natural, then um, it's, it's fine. I but think. I think there's sort of, it's not necessarily um, not correct, but I guess sort of not the most um, politically correct or whatever you want to call it um, thing to say that not all people actually are, are really free and naturally um, wanting to praise God because it actually, I, th I think it kind of brings in that question that we were always asked in Sunday school class or whatever, um, or youth group or whatever. Um, if your parents hadn't brought you up into this faith, mm. would you still be praising God? Mm. And so I think that's kind of where we need to establish that freedom. And that's kind of relating to the whole freedom with boundaries thing because we're brought up Christian. But the thing is, not everybody that's brought up Christian does end up continuing to be Christian. You know, yeah. like, do you guys know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, well, I think it's natural that mm -hmm. they have the freedom to not want to be Christian exactly. anymore or not want to uh, exactly. follow religion. The, I think boundaries, like, stop freedom when that, that freedom, so to speak, is stopped in the sense that um, nobody wants to be forced to believe in something. Mm -hmm. So belief and faith is natural. Yeah, you want to believe in something, you want to have faith in something, or um, thinking is natural. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to be told to think. That's not freedom. What about the people who live in countries that they put uh, impositions on them, or they put them under oppression, but they can't practice their religion, mm -hmm. and yet they continue to do so underground? Yeah. There's many countries around the world yeah, for sure. who are, can't buy a Bible. They can't go to a church. There are no churches. And there are no churches. Yeah. Yeah. 
they're even sometimes um, forbidden to even pray. Like if they see you praying, they will like criticize you and right. punish you. Even could yeah. punish you, yeah. Right. Sometimes uh, as, as extreme as death. Like, uh, yeah. These people, you cannot say that they're free. But they I, have faith. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say so, they're. I would. I would say they're not peaceful. Um, that actually, they yeah. they might be free to break the rules. But they're not doing it, and they're not peaceful by any means. I mean, it's not you know, when necessarily. You're... It's not necessarily imposing on their morals and their rights and beliefs and what. Or sorry, definitely not right. Their beliefs and whatnot. But it's not necessarily the. Um, uh, what I'm trying to say is, because they're doing what they want to do, mm -hmm. other people have a problem with it. They're not the ones with a problem with it. If they're the ones that feel that they have a problem with um, praising God and whatnot and being faithful, even though they're told not to, then I think it's when it gets a bit of like a, a difficult situation. So, mm -hmm. but these are people who don't have the freedom to exercise their faith. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was about to say that they're right. they're, they're still very yeah. they're under boundaries, regardless of yeah. they're breaking the exactly. rules or not. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're breaking the boundaries, mm -hmm. yeah. so that doesn't necessarily mean they're free. But, they they yeah. may not be in peace, but they're not free. I think it's just sort of the, in terms of the impositions and how it's sort of perceived, that, like maybe that's a better word for it. Or it could go the other way too. Like they could be peaceful but not free. Because they could be um, limited from practicing whatever religion they are, but because they are still practicing, even if in secret, that little like amount of faith that they have or that little practice they have gives them peace. Like knowing that they can still do it, mm -hmm. just because you don't have to, like, just because you're not allowed to do it in public, doesn't mean you can't do it within yourself. Yeah, but I think think where the consequences run high mm -hmm. of hiding. That's when you start losing your peace and your um, your state of um, tranquility, in a sense. You, you you lose all that because when you're when you're doing something naturally, but you're scared to do it, uh, something that you're supposed to be like you're supposed to be able to think to yourself um, without having anybody point a gun to your head telling you what to think. Um, when you're scared to do it, uh, scared to break the boundaries, that's when you lose all peace. And eventually, uh, when you start to lose all peace. Uh, and you're too scared to do it anymore, that's when the freedom could totally yeah. I, I disagree. Okay. <laughs> I, I disagree because I think if you're, if you're put in a position where your freedom is actually taken away from you and you're not given the opportunity to practice your religion mm -hmm. and you have to go that extra step in faith to strengthen your faith. Exactly. You get peace. Then you get peace. It oh. makes you stronger. God in gives your faith. you the peace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. right. And it makes your faith stronger. It comforts you. Yeah. But it comforts it, you. It's, it's not could. necessarily a good thing. Sorry, it's not necessarily a good thing that you don't have freedom, but it could work to your benefit because you're going, just like you said, you're going that extra mile, even though you're doing it in secret, even though you're scared to do it, you're still doing it and you're risking it. And obviously, if you're risking your non-freedom or risking um, being punished or whatever it is, God will obviously help you and he will see that you're going the extra mile. So he knows that you're strong in your faith and that you're serious about your faith and I'm pretty sure he won't leave you. He definitely will not leave you and I think that's, that's where this Bible uh, reference comes in in the Gospel of John uh, chapter 8. Most assuredly I say to you whoever commits sin is a slave of sin and a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. So our freedom is actually found in a relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. He has given us boundaries to live by, the Ten Commandments. If you can think about it, it's like lanes on the road, mm -hmm. right? right? So can you imagine driving with no lanes? It'd be pretty brutal, yeah. <laughs> similar to some places we know about, right? <laughs> that we don't need to say here. But I mean, um, driving without lanes, it's going to be brutal. Yeah. So the lanes that we have are the Ten Commandments. Those are our boundaries. So we keep mm -hmm. our lives within those borders, and we feel freedom within those borders. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I mean, um, what you said before, when, when you're trying to drive down that lane, um, 
somebody's trying to constantly veer you off that lane, mm -hmm. um, you will, I think, most people will at one point feel broken. And I think that's where they can lose um, peace in a sense. Because when you're constantly living in fear, you might feel stronger when you overcome the fear. But I think the fear can overcome you sometimes as well. And I think that's why I truly feel for people who don't live in, uh, who live in countries, sorry, that they can't express their religion. Um, because I think feeling, um, falling to fear is probably the worst feeling ever. Fear definitely is not a motivator, yeah. and it doesn't yeah. motivate us. Yeah. But uh, we need to feel more our relationship with Jesus Christ is alive. Mm -hmm. And um, he is the one who gives us the peace and the freedom. Mm -hmm. Thanks for attending another session of 2020. I look forward to seeing you very soon. God bless.